Uh, this is Mark Fix's stuff. It's a very quick uh, private video for Dave Hall, who sent me this Panasonic Real 3DO FZ1, which um, I believe he bought as working, but he says has an intermittent problem. And this is indeed, if you've seen my video series on this, quite common. Um, capacitor C36 and C32 dry out and leak. And what that means is sometimes it works and then eventually it, it gets worse and worse and worse to the point where actually now there's no LED. Uh, full disclosure, I tested this before I started the camera running and it fired up enough to load a disc in the tray, which is Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition. Um, then the screen went blank and since then we had a blinking red light and now no red light, which again is completely typical and one of the reasons that these get tested by sellers and sold as working because they are actually working the seller sees them working they put them into the box the uh, end user takes them out fires them up and unfortunately after a little while that capacitor it loses its uh, reformed electrolyte and fails and there will be leakage on the board no doubt now I've already taken the case screws out so I'm able to I've taken them all out haven't I one two three four yeah um, okay so yeah, it's just a bit stiff. Looking inside. Now I've seen quite a few of these, as you can imagine. So, uh, yeah, the problem's going to be down here. So let me just take the camera a bit closer in oh, without disconnecting it from the jig. That would help. Sorry. This is going to be a very shaky um, video. It's not meant for public consumption. So, um, yeah, I'll lift this up actually. It'd be easier. So yeah, if you can just see down, yeah, see down here, there's uh, electrolytic has leaked on the board. Let me zoom in a bit. Yeah, so you can see that quite clearly there. All of that crud around C36 and where the silver has turned to kind of a urine yellow, as opposed to uh, the color of the other contacts that is the problem there that capacitor and that capacitor this one is probably fine so uh, yeah we're going to take this apart whip those out replace them and uh, see how we get on from there just a quick sanity check that i do on uh, the batteries on these i've never found one that's needed to be changed yet so uh, yeah 3.09 volts so the uh, memory safe battery is okay so it's not worth changing that Okay, with the board out, I'm going to attempt to show you the damage in situ. Uh, excuse for the shaky camera. So you can see there above the lettering on the board C36 is clear evidence of the leakage. And there's a little bit of damage that's gone onto the top substrate of the board, but I think it's something we can work with. And also C32 will need to come out as well because that's probably gone high ESR as well. Okay, so going to crack on and change these. Okay, so uh, C32 is removed and we've got a Peak Atlas uh, sort of best of breed ESR tester. And what this is testing is to see if the component has gone resistive, which will stop the flow of electricity. Now on this part, which is a 10 microfarad um, 16 volt part, you'd be expecting to see around 0.4 of an ohm, roughly speaking, as a maximum and ohm is a unit of resistance. So Let's see what we get in here. Yeah, so that's massively, massively resistive. Uh, 2.3 ohms. So yeah, that's one of the reasons that it's working. Also, it's meant to be a, a 10 microfarad part and that's down to um, 8.2 microfarads. And these have a plus or minus 10% um, variance rate usually. So you know, even if it was plus or minus 20%, that would be very, very borderline on the capacitance and the ESR is just completely out of the water. That's basically acting like a brake for electrical energy. So, um, let me just turn the solder off. Hang on, it's very loud. Now, with the, um, the capacitors there removed, can actually see here there's wetness on the board and that's from the recent powering on and that's caused that capacitor there which is actually um I see it's C35 not C32 as I said earlier to um, leak a little bit more and just to show you that, that is actually wet I'll get a cotton bud 
and remove it. I say that, I'm not sure where I put the bloody things. Hang on, right. Oh, I'm so organised today. I'm going to leave this bit in because I've already got time to edit it. <laughs> okay, so, um, where were we? Oh, yeah, take this in the other hand. And can you around the camera? Yeah, so you see here, this stuff here that's coming off is that's electrolytic leakage mixed with the top substrate where the alkaline is actually eaten into the board. So, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to clean this off clean up all around here I'm going to use a light acid solution to neutralize that so it doesn't eat in anymore and I'm going to replace the capacitors put it all back together and I'm going to come back and show you some testing oh actually before I do that I just want to show you this actually so this is the larger capacitor which is C35 if we we're going to focus there's the uh, corresponding capacitor with the wetness on the underneath so again, this ties into what I was saying, that um, these sit in storage, they work for a couple of hours. Seller says, yeah, that's fine, it works, tested. And often they'll get to the buyer who will test it for a couple of hours, kind of lose interest, um, put them away. And then a couple of months later, they'll say, oh, it's just stopped working. So, uh, yeah. Right, so yeah, I'm going to um, replace those two capacitors with fresh capacitors. I've tested this with the ESR meter. Tested the large one with the ESR meter, that's fine. I've tested a few of these around here, they're fine. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be the problem, along with the other one. Now, this has got around two ohms of uh, resistance as well. Just another quick update. Uh, cleaned all of the um, the leakage off of the board, which you can see there. And I just wanted to say that there is, um, yeah, it's pretty clean now. Um, applied some no clean uh, solder flux to the pads. You can see there's still a little bit you know, a little bit grey, but um, that should clean up when we heat the capacitors. So um, there's no damage on the board. I just wanted to say that. Got to be thorough and fair in the reporting. Right, I'll come back to you when the uh, components are in. Okay, new capacitors in, no problem. Let's continue. Hmm. Wish that had stopped dinging on my nerves. I tested the AC input and it's uh, 16 volts AC so that's all good there's no shorts or problems in the AC winding. Yeah, come on you pick up and you go through there. Lovely. That's the bit where I can never remember which ones go in before the shield. I'm pretty sure that one goes in before the shield. Well, I'll come back to you when I've screwed this all together. Okay, final video here from uh, Mark Fix's Stuffland. Uh, this is the Panasonic 3DO from Dave Hall. Uh, it's up and running now. The major problem we had was the power stage here. We've replaced the capacitors. Um, also, as soon as we replaced the capacitors, we ended up with a burnt out fuse from the power stage um, because the strain that had been put onto this for uh, 49 I can't remember 4940 I think it is anyway this ramping voltage regulator um, uh, blew out and just went open so the 20 volt DC input went all the way across and started outputting which naturally uh, blew the fuse because the current draw was massive uh, luckily that didn't take out any other components and as you can see it's running it's been running for about four hours now very very warm as these uh, usually do get but um, yeah that's all she wrote so uh, I'm literally this is my last video I'll keep it short and sweet uh, this is going to go back together and go back to day four so uh, thank you very much